Okay guys, grow the farm up. We're here looking at our Austrian winter pea cover crop. Uh, commercial corn planted right into the cover crop of Austrian winter peas. Worms everywhere as I dug up just a little bit of ground here. Look at how incredibly porous uh, this is from the root growth of the Austrian winter pea and also uh, very good earthworm activity. I mean, there's a worm, just worms, worms, and worms. More worms everywhere. Take a look at that. This has been a notoriously clay piece of ground. This particular test plot is about 15 acres. And on this one, what we did is we just let the Austrian winter peas grow. No fertilizer, no herbicide, no uh, other input costs other than land and uh, seed and a little bit of water. But this has been just a notoriously clay piece of ground for years. And you can see the uh, root structure of the Austrian winter pea. It really grows. I mean, just, you know, God, look at that porous hole here I mean the Austrian winter pea they seem to grow you know vertically and horizontally in your uh, top three six eight inches of soil uh, look at the uh, just remarkable porousness I mean un unbelievable let's dig a little more up here and see what we find a, you know another earthworm uh, this another earthworm you know this is truly regeneratively farmed cover cropped and again I mean you just find porous hole after porous hole and a lot of it I, there's another worm you know a lot of it is the uh, the, well, the way that the uh, the roots of the Austrian winter pea grow now let's carry on here and take a look. Uh, again, no, no herbicide. I didn't spray a single herbicide on this field all year. No, no, no uh, weed killing herbicides were sprayed in this patch at all. Uh, the Austrian winter pea uh, did almost overtake the corn crop. <laughs> And, you know, you can see, I mean, uh, corn plants just do this this time of year, but you can kind of see the discoloration up to this line. And uh, some of that is that the Austrian winter peas were, you know, this tall. They were, they were two feet, three feet tall. But look at the, uh, the great amount of uh, just biomass and organic matter, uh, you know, there's certainly some weed escapes out here. Absolutely there are, but it's, you know, quite remarkable. Here we got a spot, here's a spot that, uh, for whatever reason, didn't get planted. You know, maybe planter air, or who knows what, but look at how clean it is. I, you got a giant weed escape right there. So, you know, don't misunderstand me. You know, absolutely no herbicide, uh, yeah, you're gonna have some weed escapes, but this is extremely remarkable um, Let's take a look here and see Drop dropped my shovel Let's take another look here. Okay Let's see what we've got here and you can see whoops, excuse me. You can see uh, you know the 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 viney nature of this Austrian winter pea and this looks like it, it was a drive track that we drove the planter down Let's see and again. This has been one of my notorious clay. Oh that just that just sinks in Remarkably just sinks in and look at that more earthworms Look at how porous the soil has become and uh, right this direction now we're gonna go over here into a conventionally 
farm plot, which is right next to the Austrian winter peas. And you can see here, no Austrian winter peas uh, here. This is a conventionally uh, grown, uh, you know, we put on uh, herbicides, fertilizers, uh, things of that nature. And uh, I, I think the, you know, the corn looks very uh, good, you know, on both sides of the field, a little gray leaf spot. Uh, you know, this is right next to that Austrian winter pea patch, so we didn't put any fungicides or anything on uh, as we travel through the field a little further. Let's take a look at one here. Man, that's not a bad looking ear of corn by any, by any measure. Um, but you can, you know, you, let's also take a look at the soil here. And, you know, we do have pretty good soils from, you know, the, this, this farm has been in cover crops and rotation for years also. So it's not as though, uh, you know, this has uh, not had uh, some regenerative farming practices used on it before. I mean, good earthworm activity over here also. And you can also see you know some porousness in the soil also here but the important thing is and i want to ask you guys uh, i know we're not supposed to say this anymore but I, I would like to make some money farming and uh really uh, uh lower my risk profile across my entire farm i have a ba you know hundreds of dollars an acre in herbicides and uh fertilizer and uh, various other, uh, I guess what I would call uh, conventional commodity practice. Uh, and you can see even over here where we sprayed, you have some weed escapes. And so let's venture back over into the Austrian winter peas. And you can see we're just getting into the first row or two. And yep, I mean here's a here's a weedy patch, definitely. I mean you can definitely see a bit of a weedy patch here and there. There's more weeds out here in the Austrian winter pea patch. But now let's take a look at an ear of corn over here. Not quite as big, a little tipping back. If you ask me, this corn looks slightly uh, nitrogen deficient. Um, the Austrian winter peas, through the test that we did this summer, uh, probably gave us just shy of, God, I, 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 I had a hard time believing it, just shy of a couple hundred pounds of nitrogen. And we drilled these Austrian winter peas with our uh, little drill last fall, as that'd be about uh, October of 2019. And then we overwintered. If you look at my channel, you can see um, where I'm walking around February 10th of 2020, and there's green, uh, green growth. The Austrian winter peas overwintered that well. I'm really interested in the root structure of this Austrian winter pea. And, you know, I, we saw it on the other side too, because we, we have been working towards, you know, regenerative farming practices, matching chemistry with biology uh, for, you know, decades. But boy, they're just, the worms are remarkable. Um, you know, if this corn is anywhere close to, I mean, that's not a bad looking ear of corn for no nitrogen, no herbicide, no fungicide, no insecticide. This entire field is non-GMO. You can see a little insect feeding on the end there, a little tipping back. The ears aren't quite as big around, but if this Austrian winter pea patch yields, uh, you know, 150, 
55 bushels, let's just say. And that conventional patch that's about 20 rows that way yields, you know, 240. Boy, I'm really gonna have to push my pencil and uh, think about replicating this over a thousand acres. And I, I think my banker probably wouldn't like that because he's gonna be missing out on all that interest. But I just wanted to show you guys, uh, you know, this is very interesting study. We'll see, I'm very interested to see what this yield monitor says. Um, you know, it, it also gives you some good soil armor. Uh, if this works out, these are in 30 inch rows, if I haven't said that yet. If this works out, um, you know, I've kind of roughly worked out my break evens. And obviously my break even is much, much less, excuse me, much, much less on this Austrian winter pea test plot. Uh, we have some other plots where we, you know, burned back the Austrian winter peas a little bit. Uh, with the corn a little bit uneven, you know. It had to come up through. Well, let's just take a look here. I mean, that ear corn didn't have one pound of nitrogen applied to it. Uh, what you would call, you know, either dry liquid or uh, that god awful anhydrous ammonia. Uh, you know, not one pound of uh, commercial fertilizer applied to that ear of corn. That's all nitrates and nitrogen and fertility provided by the Austrian winter pea. Uh, and it overwintered. Now the corn is a little bit uneven uh, because it did have to come up through the cover crop. And in this particular patch, as I said, we didn't burn them back. And I, I was concerned that the uh, the corn would come up through the Austrian winter peas. And so you can see, you know, there's some corn at some various different stages. You know, there's a little itty bitty guy. There's an ear that's not that big. Uh, you know, the, the truth will be in the yield monitor and we'll see how this all works out, guys. Uh, I think this is gonna be a really interesting test trial uh, to see how this may be replicated. Uh, for future years, uh, you know, I've been playing with these Austrian winter peas for uh, a couple, three, four years now, and this is one patch where we just uh, drilled the peas last fall and let them go. And I wanted to just show you guys quick. There's been so many people in and out of here taking a look at this that we've kind of got a roadway run down now. But you know, over here, and we'll just take a quick walk down the lane. Over here is the conventionally farmed, uh, you know, commercial herbicide fertilizer. And I've got hundreds and hundreds of dollars an acre more in this corn, and it looks fine. Nothing wrong with it. I mean, don't misunderstand. You, you, you can be good at conventionally farming too. No, nothing wrong with that. But if these uh, Austrian winter peas yield within 75 to even 100 bushels, even if they yield 75 or 100 bushels less, that's pretty close uh, to input costs. And I tell you what, uh, lowering the risk profile of uh, agricultural operations is really what soil health, uh, cover cropping, and nutrient density is all about. Uh, this has been a very uh, good learning experience for me. wanted to share it with you guys real quick, show you what the soil looks like. I mean, we don't have bad soils over there. You know, we've been in <laughs> cover cropping, regenerative farming rotations for 10, 15, you know, almost 20 years on some of these farms. So, uh, but we wanted to do a trial where we just drilled the peas last fall, about 15 acres, and just let them go plant the corn right into it and we're going to let the yield monitor tell us uh, and uh, that will be a very interesting day. I'll keep you updated. You can look back at my channel and you can see you know where we planted into this. I got about three or four other videos that uh, show you know green farming, uh, green planting and uh, regenerative farming. Uh, this particular plot is uh, back in some videos on my channel. Uh, so, you know, appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to look at this uh, with me. Uh, Austrian winter peas, 
Uh, there's a number of other various different uh, cover crops that we put in also. But uh, this Austrian winter pea, guys, I, you know, I, I really uh, encourage you guys to take a look at it. Um, put a lot of nitrogen, uh, available nitrogen, into the soil. Uh, and I am extremely surprised. Uh, you know, obviously the conventional corn, the conventionally farmed corn is probably going to yield more. I mean, in fact, not probably it will. But the question is, you know, I, I'm not trying to grow big bragging yields. You know, do you guys want to grow the highest yielding corn in the county? Well, of course, everybody would say yes to that. But how about we uh, change up uh, the uh, paradigm a little bit? I want to grow the highest grossing, the highest uh, net return corn in the county. I would rather grow the highest uh, uh Pro, uh, the most profitable 185 bushel corn in southeast Nebraska than grow, uh, you know, the high risk, you know, near break even highest yielding corn in southeast Nebraska, you know, around 280, 300 bushels. That, that costs a lot of money to uh, get yourself up there into that 275 to 300 bushel range. So, all right, guys, I'm going to uh, move on with the evening here, grow the farm up. Austrian winter pea update. We'll let you know what the yield monitor says.